Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today, Mr. Bhavani Sankaradikari has come with second chapter of BBS second. It is the title of the today of today is defining business communication. How we define business communication? What is business communication? What are the features of business communication? How we define business communication? These are the very important things to know to those who are doing business, right? So I have brought some of the slides and the students can share these slides and learn. Key features of communication are sharing, connecting and building relations main concept is of communication is sharing ideas connecting with other people building relationship with the people what it comes when it comes to defining communication there hardly exists a universally accepted definition of it no universally de accepted de definition comes in the field of definition of communication right the comment the word communication is derived taken from latin verb communicate which means to make common which means to share which means to impart and even to participate these these are the different meanings of communications right in this sense the primary meaning of communication is not just speaking reciting and writing all these activities that may fall to make common or to share or to participate. It is not speaking or reciting or writing. It is just making common. It is just sharing the idea. It is just participating in the activities. That is called communication, right? It must include interest shared by the parties involved and sharing is inherent in the very origin of the nature of communication. Without sharing, it is not possible to go ahead in the process of sharing of communication, right? Communication is an exchange of facts, ideas, opinions, or emotions by two or more people. It means exchange of ideas, exchange of opinions, exchange of emotions, exchange of facts, right? That is communication. It is exchange of knowledge, it is exchange of beliefs, exchange of thirsts, exchange of whatever comes in our heart, that is communication. It is the process involving the transmission. Transmission means passing the message and receiving the ideas, feeling, tra transmission of feelings, receiving of others' feelings, and attitudes both verbally and non-verbally. That type of activity is called communication. The process of communication, communication involves exchange of ideas. If we exchange our ideas, that is called communication. It should be accurately reproduced in the reader's mind. It should be accurately reproduced, put in the reader's mind. And if that ideas are set in the reader's mind, and then only it becomes possible to have the successful communication. Feedback or response assures the accurate transmission of ideas. Uh, if feedback comes and then if assurance comes, accurate transmission of ideas can be trusted, can be believed. Shared sets of symbols, that is verbal and non-verbal, are used to transmit ideas, facts, opinions, emotions, and attitudes. These are the forms of communications. Communication is dynamic and interactive and calls for the detailed action. Communication means if the communication takes place successfully and it demands the action, it calls for a detailed actions. Right? And it is dynamic and interactive, right? So business communication is an exchange or transfer of ideas. It is an exchange of ideas. It is a transfer of ideas and information between people within and outside an organization with the purpose of achieving organizational goals. We can have the organization goals to achieve. Such goals may include planning, 
controlling, release and building, promoting the company's images. These goals are there, especially planning and controlling, release and building, and promoting any company's image would be one of the ways, one of the most important things to communicate. It is the act of making the organization more powerful. It is nothing but the organization making more powerful, strong enough, and advanced one through the process of effective communication. And it is just moving ahead. It is the communication for the existence and life of the organization. Right? It is the communication for the existence as well as life of the organizations so there are the natures of communication different types of natures of communications as uh, i have brought these natures of communication in the form of points based on the definition and the process of communication we can identify the nature of communication in the following points how we just communicate natures of communication means how we communicate how we talk how we share our ideas how we exchange our ideas how we become successful to transfer the ideas that is called nature of communication and the first one is exchange of information we exchange our information through the communication. Second one, continuous process of uh, having the activities done. Another one is, third one is mutual understanding. If I speak, if I communicate my idea, the addressee, the listener must know what I'm talking about. Interpretive, we must interpret. The meaning must be interpreted. Without interpretive activities, the communication cannot take place. It is because of interpretive activities, the communication can take place. And symbolic, it is through the symbols we can communicate the ideas. Symbolic uh, communication. Response or feedback, last one is response, second last is res response and feedback. What sort of response we get? What sort of feedback we get from others? That is called communication, right? Another one is social activity, right? What type of social activities we generally get? And that is called communication and nature of communication. Let's talk a little bit about in detail about these points, right? Exchange of information. What does it mean? How we exchange the information? Human communication facilitates, fascinates the exchange of information. Why can we communicate for the information, for the knowledge? Such information includes facts, ideas, opinions, and attitudes. What are the information then? That is facts, they are about ideas, they are about opinions, and about attitudes, right? This kind of communication is a, a two-way process that involves at least two parties. Without two parties, without listener and the speaker, communication cannot take place. So it is, it is often known as two ways two key parties, two forms, two key uh, process, we just, uh, uh, two way process, right? Communication takes place between two groups, individual to individuals, or groups, organization to organization, okay, person to person, that is what called exchange of communication. Second one is called continuous process. What is continuous process then? It is said that communication is a continuous process. It is not a static, but a dynamic and constantly involving process. It goes on and on. It moves on and on. And communication does not mean it takes only once and it stops forever. It doesn't mean that. It is continued forever. It was yesterday, it is today, it will be tomorrow. This communication takes place continuously from time to time, from um, every time, right? Another one is mutual understanding. What is mutual understanding then? Communication, mutual understanding is understanding one another about the communication taken place by the people. Communication is a proposal to bring about mutual understanding. The receiver understands the message intended by the sender, right? The communication has to take place within a shared environment, including the symbolic system that is a language. Without the use of language, it is not possible to have the communication, right? So it is shared ideas. It is known to one another. It is understood by the speaker and the listener. In that sense only, it is possible to have the right type of communication. So mutual understanding is quite necessary for the communication, right? Another point is interpretive nature of communication. That is, the receiver must play the act 
active role for giving the intended message who listens that must play the active role how the language is understood how it is received in this sense communication is always interpretive process in which the part is involved to create the meaning of the message only directly telling by the speaker without understanding by the listener is not the means of uh, taking communication it does not become successful right second last is called symbolic right symbolic system there is a system of the language humans use symbols to communicate with each other in non-verbal communication gestures postures facial expressions body movements space and time stand for the ideas we want to communicate because of these activities because of gestures because of just language because of uh, postures facial expressions body movements without language also we can communicate sometimes with the images with the symbols right the primary means of communication is language and language itself is a symbolic system right so it is through the language we take communicate we take the communication in absence of language in absence of gestures in absence of postures in absence of facial expressions in absence of movements of the body in absence of particular time and space communication cannot take place right that is why this is symbolic stage now response or feedback what is response when we communicate the listeners respond they give the feedback when we get the feedback and the speaker knows either he is having right type of communication successful communication or his communication is failure right for communicative event to succeed it should be able to elicit a reaction or response there must be response there must be reaction a message only becomes successful when a receiving party understands it if that receiving party does not understand it and it does not become successful reacts it or responds to it it becomes successful only in that condition receiving party must respond it must understand it must react it must okay till something and then only it is successful it is regarded as a successful communication now last one social activity for communication to take place at least two or more than two parties should be involved at least two or more than two parties or more than two organizations or two organizations must be involved in the process of communication communication in a significant way brings people together initiates meaningful social reactions without social reactions without bringing two key people together to organize and together communication cannot take place by sharing information facts and ideas people come together and organize their relationship through communication if nobody shares any ideas who comes near who shares there who how communication takes place both parties must share common symbolic system such as language gestures and and culturally accepted symbols culturally accepted symbols must be used right this is how the communication takes place in the definition of communication and the key in the exact system how the nature of communication takes place is all about it you can read the slide you can listen it you can just go through the slides and get better ideas thank you